Harry Armbrust. You're under arrest for the murder of Charlotte Armbrust. What? You have the right to remain silent. We know his wife. What's going on here? Take him away. Helen. By his own testimony, as well as his father's, the gun went off when he attacked his father. Felony assault. Accidental shooting or not, felony murder rule applies. What is she talking about? You're looking at an automatic life sentence, Gary. That's what I'm talking about. Helen, come on. I told you, Eleanor, I told you he should be more afraid of me than his father. This is an overreach. Life sentence, Gary. Go celebrate, Dad. Is this true? Can I get life? Tell me! Don't say anything to anybody. I'll be right back to talk to you. get for perjury it's discretionary but i think i can make a pretty decent argument to the judge and we have to decide today there is really no decision gary if we don't plead to the perjury then the felony murder charge doesn't get dropped and we can't risk that they've got you dead to right on perjury anyway so there's no real reason not to jump at this why do the sentencing today the da wants to put this behind her and so do you now there's a chance we can get you out of here so let's just do it I fired with a drug history, emotionally unstable, being asked to put his dad away for life. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. The law insulates us from having to testify against a spouse. Well, a son's connection with a father can be just as powerful. Gary Armbrust isn't a bad kid, Your Honor. We all know that. He just couldn't go through with sending his dad to prison. Yes, the law does protect spouses from giving testimony against each other, but there's no such immunity when it comes to father and son. And they don't get to just make up a law because in their minds, the love is just as powerful. What's at stake here is the integrity of this process. He committed perjury. He lied under oath. And if we tolerate it, we have to consider the worst case scenario. The day may come where witnesses lie to help free premeditated murderers. This case, this case is the worst case scenario. A murderer is walking free because the defendant committed perjury. Your Honor, you and I, you and I walk into this courtroom every day without clients. In essence, we work for the room. What he did to this room and technicalities and fourth amendments, it, he killed her and stuffed her in a closet. He killed a nun. He, Helen? I'm sorry. He... He lied. We work for the room, Your Honor. We work for the room. mindful of how difficult it must be to be faced with testifying against one's own father, especially when that testimony could result in life imprisonment. But I am also mindful of the court's need to assure the integrity of this criminal justice process. Perjury is to be taken very, very seriously. I know you know this. I know you were apprised of the risks. Nevertheless, you chose to assume those risks. In fact, given these warnings, your commission of perjury was particularly knowing. I sentence you to 20 years at Cedar Junction. The sentence is to begin immediately. Bailiff, we're adjourned. We'll appeal. Gary, I want you to hang in there. We're going to appeal. We're going to appeal.